There she is. Hi. All right, so it is seven o'clock. Um, I think we want to go ahead. Either? Yeah, do, uh, do you mind? I don't want to go off of oh. my... Um... Right. Okay. Oh, you shifted. It's like the Brady Munch, the shifting. I know. I haven't heard back yet. Okay, so I'll wait. Why don't we give it another minute and then she can join in. Sounds good. As she's ready. Such a funny noise, the dog. I think it was a dog. I think you were right. It was my dog, yes. Okay. I had to mute myself so I could have a conversation with my dog about expectations for the meeting. <laughs> yeah, you gotta set some norms for that dog. That's right. Put a mask on the dog. <laughs> I do laugh every time I hear the dogs barking because if my dog barked during a meeting, he's got such a hound dog howl and it takes like 10 seconds to get the whole thing out. So it would be, yeah, a nightmare. <laughs> so Amanda, anything? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead then and call the meeting to order. Tonight is our Thursday, May 21st, 2020 special meeting of the school committee that I will call to order now. And as a preliminary matter, um, this is um, the school committee meeting. I am Nancy Cavanaugh, I am the vice chair. Permit me to confirm that all persons uh, and members anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So I will start with you, Jen. Yes. Amanda. Yes. Meg. Yes. And Carol. Yes. The anticipated speakers on the, there are no additional anticipated speakers on the agenda this evening as it is a special meeting with just one agenda item. So the introduction to our remote meeting, good evening. The open meeting of the school committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we are complying with the executive order that suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All meetings of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The executive order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as the public body makes provisions through adequate alternative means to ensure interested members of the public are provided reasonable access to the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law this meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the school committee, committee is meeting by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join, which would be through HCAM this evening. Additionally, the meeting may be broadcast through HCAM through one of many of its channels or platforms. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that others may be able to see you or take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting materials and packets. All supporting materials that have been provided to the members of the body are available on the town's website via the meeting, web meeting calendar unless otherwise noted. 
the public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless noted otherwise. And, and that is the way that we will follow. Meeting business ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, Nancy Cavanaugh, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will invite board members to provide any further comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to unmute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. I'm sorry, please remember to mute it when you're not speaking. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. In this particular meeting, we're not actually uh, going to be taking any meetings, so that's not actually applicable to us. So at this time, I would ask that we move to the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would ask for all those who are able to join us and stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so as you guys are aware, tonight is our superintendent's summative evaluation uh, preparation. So I have asked Amanda because um, of her extensive knowledge on this and the additional research that you did um, with the MS MASC to lead us in that um, discussion. So I will yield that over to you, Amanda. Thank you. Um, so tonight is a really just a working session for us. And the objective tonight is to look at the summative evaluation rubric. I know we've all had an opportunity to put our own um, individual thoughts together on the superintendent's performance for this year. Um, but we want to look at that together and address any areas where one of us may have sort of an outlying um, assessment so that we can resolve any disagreements or any discrepancies in how we have viewed the performance today. Um, so the process wise, what will happen is we'll talk about the different each of the different goals and each of the um, focus indicators that we agreed to evaluate the superintendent on and where there are any discrepancies, we'll have discussion and, and hopefully come to agreement out of this meeting. Um, our, our agreements will go to the acting chair. Nancy, who is going to put together our um, composite review, because as we all know, they're the only review that actually counts for the superintendent is the committee's composite review. That is that is what um, you know is in fact the review for her. Our individual reviews will be available to Dr. Kavanaugh for her reference, but the only one that really counts is what we come up with com as a composite for the committee. So um, coming out of this meeting, as I said, will Nancy will be able to go away with. Um, our discussion and um, any dis resolved discrepancies and have hopefully, ideally, better insight into how to build a good composite review for us. So I have a blank um, a blank rubric here. I'm much better at writing than typing when we're going rapidly. So I'll be taking some notes, but obviously we'll have the recording that we can reference, which will be helpful too. So I thought what we would do as a process, we've never done this exactly like this before, but I thought what we would do for a process is like I said, go through each goal first. And um, I think that the default is that the goal was met. But if there's anyone who thinks for the goals or the indicators that it should be either a higher evaluation or a lower than what would be expected, we can say so. And then we can share our rationale and see, see where the group um, comes up to. Does that make sense? OK. So um, for anyone following along at home, um, the materials that we use are all really provided by MASC. MASC dictates the process for how we do this, um, the kind of um, rubric that to use and the template to use, all of which can be found on the MASC.org website if, and are also available upon request. So the first goal that we will look at um, is the student learning goal, which is actually goal four but it comes first in the template, so I'll go with that one. Um, and just to check in with members, did everybody have a chance to find, there was a lot of material to look at. <laughs> did everyone have a chance to find the resources they needed for tonight? Yes. Okay. okay. So the student learning goal, the, the 
scale for goals is did not meet some progress, significant progress met or exceeded. Did anyone have a rating that was something other than met that they wanted to talk about? Through the chair, I think I'll call on Meg. <laughs> chair, is that okay? Um, I thought that Dr. I better put glasses on for this one. I thought that Dr. Kavanaugh exceeded expectations for this goal. Um, I think that any of us could point to a number of examples which she put forth in the material she gave us to illustrate how she's promoted academic excellence in Hopkinton. And you know, I think what's so unusual about this student learning initiative is that she not only has boosted the performance, sorry, I've got hair, caught my glasses, of the, the top notch, more traditional learners, um, but she's really given a lot of learning opportunities for the more idiosyncratic learners in our population, I think, um, and has opened up more opportunities for them to develop their skills for the future. I'm not only thinking about the STEM program, but I'm thinking about the CVTE program um, that has now come into being, um, thinking about the, the shelter and the respite of the 18 to 22 program um, to help boost kids on their way. Um, you know, there's so many programs that she oversees that are just wonderful. I think, um, you know, for me, I'm increasingly aware of the brilliance of the music program for every age group, being able to advance their skills um, and have this intimate relationship with string instruments and the like, you know, when they're nine and 10 years old, it's very impressive. Um, can I just say one more thing? On top of this, you then have COVID-19, when within the space of two weeks, she majestically put together this student learning program. And I was gobsmacked in reading the secondary learning um, program or pamphlet that she put out that she wrote one April Saturday. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I, I really think it's astonishing the speed and efficiency with which she attends to um, curricular details to teaching initiatives. Um, and I think the success of all the programs that she's had her hands in are really testament to her think on her feet strengths. I could say more, but I'll, I'll let someone else go. Does anyone want to offer a different rating than exceeded? or met or I would agree with the I had actually marked that as exceeded as well um, and some of the things that Meg has said I actually had uh, seems like a lifetime ago when you think back to when we were discussing CVTE and some of these other in the 18 to 22 program kind of forgetting that that launched in this cycle just because so much has happened since then uh, and I also um, was really struck by that pamphlet that was put together on a Saturday um, and, and just how in the midst of some really tough times, uh, Dr. Kavanaugh has had to shift thinking rapidly um, in ways that you can't possibly capture when you're looking at the, the ratings of where Hopkinton falls on, you know, this one and that one's uh, evaluation of how our district is. It doesn't capture some of those things that, as Meg said, the idiosyncratic um, pieces, uh, learners, that in kind of looking at the nitty gritties of how it impacts each learner. Um, so I would, and I know just from people I know in other districts that what we are putting forward right now uh, is really remarkable given uh, the times that we are in. I know that there are districts that are not doing any synchronous learning it all um, and the fact that you know I watch my own little learners sitting working on their stuff every day is um, in the time that that had to flip on a dime um, truly remarkable. Yeah I, I, I would 100% support exceeded as well I'm not gonna argue with that I, and I, I did actually I'm not gonna echo what you said we really don't have to go through the whole eval tonight but um, 
you know, both pre and post COVID times, I think so much, so much has been accomplished in this particular goal that exceeded, I think makes sense for me. Yeah, I actually, um, I wrote in my comments that, you know, I feel like I, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, I was sort of wavering between um, met and exceeds. And then, I mean, just, just to, again, what everybody has already said, but I actually also called out the secondary learning plan in my comments, because you look at that and you think she put this together in a day to, you know, guide the district in, in, a, in a completely new style of learning. Um, and so I do think, you know, I fully support the idea of, um, of going with an exceeded um, rating for this goal. Okay. Yep. So let's move on. Exceeded it is. <laughs> okay, so the second. Just a moment. Carol, are your cheeks burning or your ears? Is it your ears that are supposed to burn? A little bit in the neck. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yes, in the world's most awkward process, we will forge on with Carol sitting right here. <laughs> okay, so goal number two um, is a professional practice goal. And this one was understanding that staff growth in areas of diversity, sensitivity, equity, and inclusivity cannot be fostered by professional development alone. Continue grassroots methods to build the repertoires of administrators, faculty, and staff with the hopes of ensuring greater social and psychological safety for all students. Again, if, we, if we're all on MET, we'll stick with MET. If anybody wants to argue either way, go right ahead. I think we're good. I think, you know, and again, this will all come out in the actual review, what the justification was, but I mean, clearly this goal was met probably and then some, um, but among the many things that I personally called out um, was the uh, policy JBD that was brought forth, like it seems like a million years ago, but on gender identity support that Dr. Kavanaugh um, brought forth, which in itself was you know, a wonderful testament to her concern for each and every student and the, the challenges they face. But then to adjust the draft to factor in the students' um, own voices that were heard at the meeting and bring that back, I think just typified, you know, Dr. Kavanaugh's concern for, for everyone, for every student. And I think for all of us, um, diversity is not something you just do and you get a check mark. It's a habit. It's a lifelong commitment. And, you know, we all stumble at times and we all make progress at times. And I think um, Dr. Kavanaugh exhibits a real concern for this topic and for um, making sure that, that we are inclusive and supportive in our school. And I had a lot more on my, which will, will come out through the comments, but um, if there are no arguments. We'll move on with that one. So I just I want to just point out that I also had pulled out in my comments that same policy and just the fact that she had thought to invite the students uh, when we were having that discussion, which enable us to have their voices as part of our final draft was really remarkable. Yeah, as did I. It's it's interesting we all keyed in on that, and I I wondered if it was Amanda and, and because Amanda and I worked together. Um, on the policy working group, I wondered if that was specific to us. So Nancy, it's good to hear that you also cued in on that. Cause I, I mean, she did, I, I can't remember, you were at a meeting in Framingham, Dr. Kavanaugh, I can't, or something, you were at a meeting and had heard about this policy and brought it to the attention of the policy working group. So I think, you know, as what Amanda has already very eloquently said, this is something that's always on your mind and you're always thinking about ways that we can do better, so. I, I just wanted to add one comment. I'm not going to be lengthy here, but my sense is that under Dr. Kavanaugh's direction in terms of increasing sensitivity to diversity and our thinking about equity, I feel like the school is really leading the way for the community. And I don't often think that's the case in a lot of towns, but I think the school is modeling an acceptance and a celebration of difference. Um, and if the kids are learning that, then taking it home, I just think the, the effects are fantastic. Yep, Jen, I actually wasn't on the policy working group when this came forth. I, wait, but I rejoined after, but at this time, I think it was you and Mina. So, excellent. Okay, so our next goal, um, and again, not to cut anything short, the actual review is at the next meeting, but this is our working session. So we just wanna make sure we have time to cover 
what we need to. Uh, also, professional practice goals is goal three, grow communication between families and the superintendent and grow relationships with elected officials. So you want to start off? I actually think that communication is an area in which Dr. Kavanaugh um, really exceeds, um, it is really exceptional. Um, and this year, just noting some of the initiatives that she has taken um, with the blog, with the, there were a number of HCAM programs that went out at different points in which she was addressing uh, the community on different things, in particular, uh, noting the communication that went out around the special town meeting and the ability to really showcase for our um, residents, not just the people who are in the schools, but the people who vote to support our schools, really showcasing for them why it is that we needed additional space in different buildings. Uh, and then just um, the weekly, you know, I guess it's not quite weekly because we don't meet every week, but the emails that go out with all of our school committee meetings, I think have really drawn people in to pay more attention to what we're doing because it, it calls out what we're doing in each meeting with some of the highlights. Uh, it's, I think, increased some of the communication that people have had to us directly, um, which I think is community engagement is always a good thing. Even though it, you know, it's, there have been times when it's been uncomfortable um, and there have been times when there have been things that have had to be shared that were not terribly popular with everybody who went out, but I felt like uh, Dr. Kavanaugh always gave it the attention that it deserved, um, made personal responses to a lot of, a lot of email that uh, comes in and her volume and in cases where we're looking at the bus stops, made personal drive-bys to the stops to see what the circumstances were. So that was my thought. So are you recommending exceeded? Yes, I am. Okay. Does anyone want to concur with that? Okay, I had, um, since I'm on unmute, I'll talk. Um, I had put it as um, met, but I, I think it, it's interesting. I think that Dr. Kavanaugh has an, is, is an excellent communicator Particularly, we're communicating out to the to the community with the, um, the like you mentioned, the blog posts, uh, the HCAM broadcasts, um, which it seems like it's a tireless amount of energy that goes into all this communication. Um, I specifically was highlighting the ones about um, traffic in the fall, way back when, when the bus parking lot was a new concern, particularly of mine. Um, uh, but you know, there have been so many H very, very informative HCAM shows, um, and I do think that. Dr. Kavanaugh is someone that the community looks to for information. Um, and we've seen that specifically in this time of crisis, but I think that's always on an ongoing basis. People are looking for Dr. Kavanaugh to share what's going on. We know, we, people know they're gonna get an honest read on the budget, on anything that, that is um, relevant. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I think the only, and I, I think the budget process, again, showed excellent communication. I think this, the success at special town meeting shows that the community was educated and understood the realities of what we were facing and realized they needed to vote to support our, um, our extra classrooms. And that was a huge success. I'm hoping that as we continue this COVID reactive budget, you know, that we have to do a whole new budget, that we continue that uh, transparent style. So I had left it as met, but I'm willing to continue to discuss. I had left it as met too, and I agree with everything you've said, but you know, I was thinking about the student learning goal was just so phenomenal um, that I didn't want to take away from that. Even though I think this is great, I thought that was just off the books. So it's funny that Meg said that, and Meg, I don't want to interrupt you. Were you going to say more? No. Okay. Um, because I, I feel that there's just sort of some, some guidance, some pressure to um, choose this proficiency um, gauge for, you know, just about everything in the evaluation process. And, and, and to be honest, especially with the goals, the four goals, 
I really did feel like there were so many elements of just, you know, exceeding what was originally planned um, for the for each of the goals that I I was inclined to to mark all four of them as exceeded. And to Meg's point, I felt like you know some were blowing away what the expectations were, and others were vastly exceeding, and some were kind of exceeding. But I did feel like they all um, went above and beyond. I mean, I do think Dr. Kavanaugh you know, if we looked at her hourly rate, it would be like 10 cents an hour. She works around the clock, seven days a week. She's constantly thinking about what can be done to um, improve and support and, and maintain um, what's happening in the district. So, I mean, I, I would, you know, if there's support for um, adjusting that to exceeds, I would, I would get behind it because I initially said that and then marked it as proficient because I, you know, to Meg's point, I think there were um, two others that just blew away expectations. And um, so, you know, I, I, if there's if there's other folks who want to support that, I, I would be inclined to support it as well. I think I think I would I would be inclined to support it partly because not only was everything met, all the original goals were met, but they were met in a truncated amount of time because a, a lot of, I mean, thank goodness Dr. Kavanaugh you know, got at it right away and, and you know got at these goals early and started doing this work um, because really everything had to be done before March in order for her to really get this done for the most part and she did and it wasn't you know she didn't know that she was going to have a shortened amount of time it just it, it speaks to her diligence and her commitment and I think um, I would be comfortable if exceeded I, I think the goals are a little bit different than the four focus indicators mm -hmm. Okay, I agree with that. And, and I'm just looking at the wording of the goal too, which is to grow communication and to grow relationships. And absolutely, she's gone beyond my expectations and I think our collective expectations. Um, responding individually to all parents' emails is, is quite impressive. Um, and I know that she works really well with town officials and she has um, provided people with many reasons to have faith and trust in what she says and what she projects. So um, I'm happy to go along with that. And, you know, just, just to comment on the relationship building too, I mean, I think one valuable resource that Dr. Kavanaugh has built for us is her network of superintendents as well. And, you know, all of these relationships take time you know, you can't build relationships and trust overnight. And I think it's been a very concerted effort that has, you know, put us as a district and Dr. Kavanaugh in particular in a position where um, she has built personal relationships and, and having that knowledge base to tap into uh, has been very beneficial. So I will note that we have agreed on exceeded for this one. Okay, and our last goal uh, hold on, I'm off my, I'm over on the rubric. Let me go back. Okay. Our last goal is a district improvement goal. It is goal one, oddly enough. Um, in response to enrollment growth, conduct an analysis of school facilities and develop a capital budget reflective of perceived, perceived facilities needs. I had exceeded on this one um, because of so many reasons, but I think um, we face this year, the first ever that I have been aware of really data-driven, reasonable assessment of our growth. We really tried to um, get our arms around the data about growth and projected growth so that we could do some planning and, and do it in the most informed way possible. Everything's just a model, but I think the investment of time and energy in doing that work um, that then fed into our building of our budget and um, our capital capital growth plans um, was just so important. And I think the community needed to see that. In addition to Dr. Kavanaugh's work on the growth study committee, yet another committee where she brought that information and also, so she shared what we know, but also was able to interpret for other people in town, the impact of the growth on the district and, and the time that was spent um, there was very, I think very valuable to the whole community. So I thought, based on the way the goals were written and based on her work and the success at special town meeting, I thought Dr. Kavanaugh had demonstrated exceeded on this one. 
you could have been reading my comments, Amanda, just now, because it, I, this was one that I do think was blown away um, because the amount of data in the superintendent reports at each school committee meeting, at the special town meeting, um, all of the public forums, the growth study committee. I mean, I feel like there was such an enormous amount of information given to the community to help plan uh, and um, and look forward, you know, in terms of the growth of the student body and the growth of the town in general. So, yeah, I this is one that I did mark as exceeded as well. That's great. I I agree. I did the same. I marked as exceeded because no matter how much we needled Dr. Kavanaugh and Mrs. Rothermick, <laughs> they never complained about our questions and our hesitations. And they always came back with well-informed, comprehensive responses. Um, they never shirked their duties. I mean, I've never seen either of them shirk any duty. I don't think they're constitutionally capable of it. Um, but I, I mean, all that growth analysis and planning for school facility changes, I mean, it was just so impressive. So absolutely, this is the rock star category, just like student learning. I agree with you all. I won't add my comments tonight because I don't want to echo everybody, but. And the great thing for Dr. Kavanaugh is that she could do it all again post COVID times and plan for new facilities use and <laughs> more fun to come. Okay, that brings us to the end of the goal. So the goals we have, um, three of them are exceeded. I think we left, if I'm not mistaken, uh, goal two, the professional practice goal of diversity. We left that at net. Are we comfortable with that or do we want that to go to exceeded as well? I know we're comfortable. Okay. All right. So now um, for the listening audience, we have uh, four standards that every superintendent is evaluated on. And under each standard, there are a set of indicators. We agreed with Dr. Kavanaugh in maybe February, I think, somewhere around there, um, on a subset of indicators per the guidance of MASC. So we are only evaluating tonight this year on our focus indicators, the subset that we agreed to. And we'll just take them one at a time. The scale for these in the rubric, hold on, I've got, I need like another screen of all these windows. So the rubric, um, this is the first year that MASC is using this new rubric to sort of simplify um, the rating scale, but the, the four levels are unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient, and exemplary. And um, not to lead the witness, but the template has the P for proficient in like twice the size font and super bold because as if you read all the details, um, it is expected, it is hoped for that proficient will be where the superintendent is on these indicators. It would be exceptional to be exemplary, which is the highest. That is their guidance. So it is very normal. It's not a slight. It's a good thing to be proficient. It is a remarkable thing to be exemplary. So I think, does anyone have anything to clear? I mean, I, I'm not speaking as an expert, so if anyone has any other um, thoughts on that, does that ring true to you? Okay. So the first, the first standard that we're looking at um, is instructional leadership. And we have three focus indicators. The first one, hang on, switching windows. The first one is curriculum. It's um, element 1A ensures that all instructional staff design effective and rigorous standard, standards-based units of instruction consisting of well-structured lessons with measurable outcomes. Um, for many of the reasons that we, I'll just start this off, that we mentioned before, I had actually put this as exceeded. I thought this was a particularly strong year uh, for Dr. Kavanaugh for this particular um, indicator. I agree. I had all exemplary for standard one. I did as well. I'm willing to back that up. Again, I, I felt the pressure for proficiency, but I used uh, ex um, exemplary for curriculum and for data driven, excuse me, data informed decision making. Um, so two out of three of the um, indicators I rated as exemplary and um, instruction I rated as um, Proficient, but only because I felt like um, there, you know, the 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 evidence provided for the other two 
was just so deep and so rich. And the evidence provided for um, 1B was very, very strong, but I'm more than willing to switch the, from that P to an E. And I had had uh, the first two as exemplary. Um, so it's curriculum is the one we just discussed. 1B is instruction, ensures that practices in all settings reflect high expectations regarding content and quality of effort and work, engage all students and are personalized to accommodate diverse learning styles, needs, interests, and levels of readiness. I had that as exemplary. Uh, I had data-informed decision-making. Oddly enough, although it is a strength of Dr. Kavanaugh's, um, I had it as proficient. Maybe I was just trying to balance out my ratings. I had the whole standard as exemplary on the whole, um, but I'm certainly willing, um, based on my knowledge of the amount of data that Dr. Kavanaugh um, uh, both initiates the capture of and then digests and does so with an analytical lens. Um, you know, I think that she's very good at that, very good at trying to suss out the real meaning of data and not taking, um, I mean, data can be very misleading. It can take you in a lot of wrong directions. And I think she, she questions the data in effective ways. So I'm willing to move that. I, I just wanted to add a little thing about instructional strengths here, um, because she herself is such a, a nuanced and gifted teacher. I don't know if you watch that Hopkins School morning message and you're gonna realize what a nerd I am because I watch it again and again. <laughs> and I wanna tell you why I do that though, because it's not just that her mind moves so nimbly through this lesson about syntax and the ways in which you can rearrange the words in a sentence for different effect. Um, and it's not just her enthusiasm for the subject, but the fact is she could be speaking to college professors or third graders, and they would all understand and be excited by the topic. And her attention to detail and her nimbleness of mind have taught me over the past two years in watching her that she models the best of what a teacher can do. And that this trickles down to the administrators and to the teachers under her that she really understands instruction and the power, well, the potency of being a good and fair instructor. So exemplary on all these accounts for me. I'm good with that. Are we all in agreement? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is standard one. Um, standard two is management and operations. Let me just scroll. Okay. We have two focus indicators under standard two. Environment, which is 2A, develops and executes effective plans, procedures, routines, and operational systems to address a full range of safety, health, emotional, and social needs. Uh, and the second one is 2E, fiscal systems, develops a budget that supports the district's vision, mission, and goals, allocates and manages expenditures consistent with district and school level goals and available resources. I personally had exceeded for 2A, the environment, um, both pre-COVID and post-COVID for a lot of things we've already, reasons we've already said, but I can restate if you want. And for fiscal systems, I had proficient. I actually had exactly the same. I did too. So we can hold off our discussion and we will be sending our individual um, write-ups to Nancy. So you'll have our comments and at least we know that we all agree. So great, easy peasy. Um, next standard is family and community engagement. It's standard three. Wait, um, I'm sorry, I have a question. Sure. Um, because there were only two focus indicators in standard two, and if one is exemplary and the other is proficient, what would the overall rating then be? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know if we have to decide that now. I was just curious if there's some. I think we should decide it How to, now. Yeah. When I wrote in my comments, I had 2A as exemplary and 2E as proficient plus. Okay. There is no such thing, but that's what I wrote because I felt like there was a little extra plus. Um, I don't know. I, I had the overall rating as proficient, but 
I don't know what you guys think. So I actually did the exact same thing as you did, Amanda. Um, and part of it, all I will admit, is sort of this feeling of the pressure towards that bolded um, middle column, not quite middle column, but with the P, uh, and feeling like um, I don't want to, I, I want to let the things that I've really marked as exemplary really stand apart. Um, but I could be swayed um, either way with the overall on that particular one. So interestingly enough, it sounds like we're all sort of in the same boat on this one. Um, and, and the thing that was kind of sitting at the back of my mind, again, same thing about the whole sort of, you know, focus on this P, but um, I keep thinking like, this is only her second year doing this, you know? And I'm like, this woman is like, you know, just doing this amazing job. Well, let's throw a, you know, a deadly virus at her. Let's throw a few thousand extra students at her. Let's, you know, put this real emphasis on diversity, inclusion, and social emotional learning and see what you can do with it. And she over and over again, um, you know, jumps on it, takes it and runs with it. And so, um, you know, I, I went back and forth as well. And so, you know, for that, for this indicator, I rated it overall as proficient, but I like your P plus, Amanda. I mean, I feel like, you know, so much of what she does really is exemplary, um, you know, and it shouldn't matter if you've been in the job for six months or 10 years, if you're exemplary or exemplary, but um, I, I rated it as proficient, um, but could be convinced is really what it comes down to in more discussion, if that's what folks wanna do. I think maybe we leave it at proficient since we all sort of were there for okay. I mean, we all, I think it's reasonable for an overall rating. I mean, obviously it's all good. Um, it's funny, Jen, because in my, I wrote a big bunch of blurb at the beginning in the general comments. And one of the things that I had cited, you know, of course it is an evaluation from June, from July to June, it's a whole year evaluation, but you know, in terms of crisis um, character and, and instinct are, really essential. And I think you really see someone's true colors when the unexpected happens and you have to respond. And uh, Dr. Kavanaugh has just been incredible during this whole thing. And I think, um, you know, when you look at something like character and instinct, you can't teach that. You can't learn that in, in your programming um, for, for teacher education. You just have it. And Dr. Kavanaugh has it in spades. And I think we're just so lucky to have that. I think you know, it's, it's so easy to kind of go to the, the ultimate the exemplary because it, she just is exceptional in so many ways. But, you know, I think it's it's fair in this particular um, standard to leave us a little room for next year. We have a little room to move forward. I mean, you know, so, so we're, are we okay with that, Meg? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. I, I missed that. Um, so on to standard, uh, three, family and community. All right, we have three um, selected focus indicators here. Sharing responsibility is the first one. Continuously collaborates with families and community stakeholders to support student learning and development at home, school, and in the community. Anybody want to kick us off? I'm gonna kick us off. <laughs> I had um, proficient for this. So oh. this is the. For, are you talking about three um, B? You're muted, Amanda. <laughs> Sorry, three B. Um. I actually had exemplary for this, for sharing responsibility, um, because I thought, you know, especially in the wake of this COVID closing down of the schools, um, her ability to shift gears so quickly and to keep in communication with the families and the communities uh, community about all of the changes was just astonishing to me. Um, so her collaboration with families and doing their, their work at home too, um, I thought that was just fantastic. Well, she did awesome. all that while I was lying on the sofa for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I'm actually reading the rubric again, so let me just read for the general public, us all, the definition. I think maybe, Meg, you're probably where we should be. Um, so the proficient definition of 3B is monitors adherence to district-wide policies and practices that promote continuous collaboration with families to support student learning and development both at home and at school, as evidenced by the collaborative identification of each student's academic, social, emotional, behavioral needs, and connecting families to the necessary resources and services within the school and the community to meet the student's learning needs. In my opinion, she absolutely has done that. That's proficient. So the exemplary one says, empowers all administrators to regularly collaborate with families to address each student's academic, social, emotional, behavioral needs, and to access as needed necessary services within and outside of schools to address those needs, monitors these pr processes to ensure all student needs are being met, models this practice for others. I would be comfortable with that. I think that, I think that what you said, Meg, is accurate. I think I was inaccurate in my reading. I would agree with the exemplary rating as well. I'm not gonna argue. You're muted, Amanda. I don't like the sound of my voice, I guess. Okay, so 3C is communication. Um, let's see, it is engages in regular two-way culturally proficient communication with families and community stakeholders about student learning and performance. So I marked that as exemplary in the, um, my dog apparently did too, um, uh, was the thing that really came to mind was her work with the calendar committee uh, and looking at that historically has been such a, uh, a division within the community where it has been, when we brought it up in the past, there have been strong emotions on different sides of everything. And then in spite of that, I felt like Dr. Kavanaugh used that as a way to um, bring some unity and to really make it a piece of education for the community and inclusive, uh, inclusive inclusivity. Uh, and really, I felt this is an area where you have really exceeded. I also marked this one as exceeded um, for all the reasons that Nancy just just mentioned, and and you know. The, the fact that, again, you know, in working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, she was attending a lot of community cultural events, um, all in support of just the diverse student body. So um, I'm very comfortable with Exceeded on this one as well. And just a little side note, I remember last year at Edel Fatir, I'm probably, you know, boggling that pronunciation, but I walked into the mosque and, and there she is with her head covering and, you know, just her gracious presence in all of these events, no matter the culture, no matter the orientation, has, has just been such a boon for, for our whole community. I think she's a real unifier. Um, I remember her participation in the visions training and her hosting the diversity forums. Um, and I know that's extended beyond this past year um, to her first year. Um, but I think she's just a, a great model for the kind of community collaboration um, and cultural proficiency that we all want, because, you know, we all have our limitations. I've certainly got 87,000, which I've put on clear display every evening for you. Um, but she's very, um, she, she tries so hard to connect with every group to the best of her ability. And that's all we can do. Um, and so I think she, she models cultural proficiency and a willingness to learn about other people, um, which is really beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I would go along with that. I, I think I was at proficient. Um, mostly the, the word that kind of caught me and kept me in proficient was the two-way communication, because I think Dr. Kavanaugh excels at reaching out and and sharing information, I wasn't sure that there was the same amount of um, soliciting input, you know, in some cases, but I don't know if that's more appropriate here or in one of the indicators to come. So, I mean, certainly proficient, I could definitely go with exemplary. I think to your point, to all of your points, I think 
the outreach and, and um, commitment to connecting to populations within our community, to keeping everyone informed in ways that we've already talked about, I think it, it shows every day. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with exemplary on this if we wanna stay there. You know, Amanda, I had a similar thought at the beginning and then I remembered her listening tours um, and her way of asking for feedback and response is not a show person's way. You know, she's not making loud pronouncements. Um, it's a more subtle approach, um, which I've really grown to appreciate so much because I think she treats everyone who comes to speak to her with the same kind of dignity and respect. Um, and I think people have grown to understand that they will be treated with dignity and respect. Um, and that's the word that has gotten around. So I don't feel like I need her to go out and try to you know, jump on different groups and yank conversation out of them. Goodness knows our inbox is filled with plenty of that. So exemplary, we're good with exemplary. Okay, and 3D is um, family concerns, addresses family and community concerns in an equitable, effective, and efficient manner. Um, for me, this is where I had uh, exemplary. I think it's funny with all these, it, it's all the same standard. So some of the, the defense and the um, evidence blurs across indicators. So a lot of what we just talked about, I think also pertains to family concerns. I think Dr. Kavanaugh is, is extremely accessible to individuals who have concerns for their students and their families. I think she's extremely responsive, email and meetings and phone calls and, and driving by bus stops and you know, s s initiating the calendar um, subcommittee to address the real concerns and the changing demographics of our community. And you know, I think family concerns is, is a real strength of hers. So a lot of what you, you guys put in communication, I'm willing to go both ways, but I do think this is definitely exemplary for me. I agree. You're very sh sh short, uh, short of phrase tonight, Nancy. Um, <laughs> so I agree, Amanda, too. I was this one I had sort of if I could use your your P plus again, this is where I was, I was on the fence. And I kept going back and forth with, you know, examples of like, like the one you gave where, you know, Dr. Kavanaugh got in her car and drove to sit in front of someone's house to check out the traffic situation. I mean, and did that more than once. So, you know, I mean, that's just above and beyond what any superintendent should be expected to do, I think. Um, and, it, and you know, in just general back and forth communication. So if, if you um, are comfortable rating this as, as exemplary, I'm, I, I can be pulled to that side of the fence for sure. I agree with exemplary. Okay. All right, so that brings us to standard four, professional culture. Uh, in this standard, we have three, sorry, spanning two pages. We have three indicators. The first one is 4B, cultural proficiency. And it is ensures that policies and practices enable staff members and students to interact effectively in a culturally, culturally diverse environment in which students' backgrounds, identities, strengths, and challenges are respected. You know, th this one was a little tricky for me, and it had nothing to do with all of the wonderful things Dr. Kavanaugh has done. Um, I think it's because you know, Hopkin 10, its teaching staff is still fairly homogenous um, through no fault of the administrations. You know, it's very difficult to recruit um, a diverse teaching body, especially when you have so many tenured teachers um, in place. Um, so, you know, I always feel a little bit of angst because I know that there are students from different backgrounds who don't have teachers who look like them or who are from similar backgrounds. And so I feel that sense of isolation and loneliness. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know what she could be doing um, to improve that other than what she's already doing. I know she's on the lookout 
to increase the diversity in the teaching staff. And she does a lot of diversity training um, with the staff and admin. Um, but again, I think it's this Hopkin 10 residual monoculture um, that casts a shadow over this one for me. So I had to- Sorry, so where, where did you have it, proficient? Yes. Okay, that's where I had it as well. So I, interesting, Meg, your comment, because I, I grappled with some of the same feelings of the, I, in my comments, looking back at what I wrote, really had, you know, pulled out some of the stuff we talked about earlier about the, um, the policy, um, JDB, and some really great things that Dr. Kavanaugh has spearheaded, but also kind of grappling with the community is, it still has a little ways to catch up. Um, so I, I was sort of a P plus on that. So I was also probably in that P plus place and I, and I wavered back and forth. Um, I think I settled on proficient, but I think some of the evidence that she provided really demonstrates um, some pretty exceptional practices in the district, um, specifically the students with um, interrupted or limited, limited formal education that have come into the district um, and, you know, the work that went on behind the scenes to try to connect that student with someone so that, uh, or those students with someone so that um, they can make meaningful relationships and how they were gonna structure that student's school day. Um, I think that kind of thing, you know, they didn't just get thrown into this general population. There was just so much work that went on behind the scenes to, to try to really embrace these students who came. Um, that, that evidence really stood out to me. Um, and, we're uh, only talking about one four uh, B right now, so that's it. Actually, I'll stop right there. Yeah, I I, I agree. I think that that piece of evidence um, as one example of folding in a student um, who didn't have the same kind of background as many of our students was really remarkable. I thought. Are we okay with a, a P with this one, or it seems like we're all sort of in the PP plus. Okay. The next one is communications. This is 4C. Demonstrate strong interpersonal written and verbal communication skills. E. I, I don't see how this could be anything but exemplary, but yeah. for all of the aforementioned reasons. Yeah. Um, but if anyone disagrees, I'm, I'm willing to discuss it. I'm right there with you, Meg. Yeah. Agreed. Easy. I, I'm, I was there as well, so that's good. And the last focus indicator that we have is for E. There was a little bit of um, confusion, but it is E that we're looking at. Shared vision. Um, this one is successfully and continuously engages all stakeholders in the creation of a shared educational vision in which every student is prepared to succeed in post-secondary education and becomes a responsible citizen and global contributor. I marked that as an E. Uh, I felt like this year in particular, there were a lot of new initiatives that really captured exactly this, looking at the vision of the graduate, the CVTE, the, the STEAM program, and just really struck as we've had some of these conversations earlier in the year at the many different paths of success that are being set up for our students uh, post-secondary and just, uh, I, I'm not sure what else could have been done beyond that. It actually is more than what I, uh, you know, looking back many months, what I would have expected. Yeah, this was, a, I feel like I've been on the fence with all of them, so forgive me for saying this again, but I was on the fence too because I do feel like, um, you know, this was the year that we looked at the vision of the graduate. Um, we um, built strategic objectives that um, kind of encompass all of this, all of the elements of, the, of this particular um, indicator. So, and I, and I really think they're all fantastic. So I could easily be um, and change the, my rating to exemplary. I kept it at proficient only because I feel like these are things that um, were done exceptionally well, but they were things that just had to be done. 
Um, so that was my only rationale for, um, for rating it with proficient because it were things that needed to happen. Um, but they really were done exceptionally well. So I'd be happy to change that rating to exemplary. I, I might have been off here, but I thought about the work that's been done with challenge success and the Empower and the START program and the CVTE um, and thinking about the ways in which our whole perception of success and being a responsible citizen has become enlarged, you know, especially in the past year and a half, I think under Dr. Kavanaugh's reign. Um, so I was P plus E. And I don't disagree with any of the things that you guys have said. I think um, there is a lot, we've gotten to a place of a lot of shared vision, which I think is um, obviously critical in our district success. But the one thing that held me back, um, and it kind of was what I was saying before, and I wasn't sure where to bring it out, but I do think it's an area where we have an opportunity for um, a little bit of um, improvement, or not improvement so much as expansion, we'll say. Um, I think just engaging all the stakeholders. It, it, so that then the one thing that came to mind as I was going through this, and, I, and we ended up in a place of engagement, it was just kind of how we got there, which kind of kept me more in the P was that um, the campus plan um, vision that we were talking about. And so I think somewhere between the, um, how we engaged with the capacity study results and moved to the campus vision, um, for me, was a little bit a little bit lacking in some voices, and I, I and again we ended up at a place where we created a subcommittee, which I don't know what's going to happen to our poor subcommittee and everything. But back in the day, pre-COVID, we um, we came to a good place. So I think you know Dr. Kavanaugh heard concerns whether they were she probably I think she already had plans to address them, but she heard them and responded in, in creating this subcommittee. So I think we ended in a good place where we were going to have all stakeholders in the conversation. How we got there for me was a little bit tricky. So I kind of felt like maybe a little bit more engagement earlier in that particular effort um, would have made me feel a little bit better. So I stayed sort of in the P. I mean, I think, like I said, we got there, but that was just one area where um, I felt like the community would have had a, a lot to say. And by community, I mean, you know, sort of staff and parents and students in a lot of that conversation. So that was just one, the one thing that I was kind of thinking about in my P versus E. Right. I, I, I hear you there. And, and I agree. I hadn't even bunched that under shared vision. I was thinking more about the way the student feels at the end of the however many years here. Yeah. Um, and their role in society. But I agree with you. I, I think there probably could have been more conversation about future campus plans earlier on. Yep. So are we okay with the P on this or do we? Yeah. I think so. Okay. All righty. I think we're done. So I know, I think that brings us to the end of our work here, which is great. Um, I don't, we don't have to comment now unless you want to, but I do know that the MASC wants to get feedback on, you know, if we felt like the rubric was sufficient and helpful in doing the, doing the evaluations, or if we had any concerns about this new rubric that's being piloted. So uh, as you kind of you know, put the finishing touches on your individual evaluations and get ready to send those to Nancy or Nancy as you're doing the composite. If you think there's an opportunity or any feedback we should give to MASC, um, they would welcome that because this is one year in which districts could use either this rubric or the old one. Well, actually, and Dr. Kavanaugh, that's the same with you too. I don't know if, if you had any, you know, thoughts as you were kind of looking at the different, um, indicators and, and so forth and thinking, gee, this rubric is a little awkward or, you know, I can't really, it, it didn't describe things well enough or it didn't have enough meat to it. I don't know if there's any feedback you want to give. Thank you. Thank no, you. I do feel like when we used to get to that level of element, the rubrics would become unwieldy. So I, I think the streamlining has been helpful. Yeah. yeah. There's less overlap between the different categories. Okay. 
So you know what? I'm actually going back. Did we actually do the overall rate rating for each standard? I don't know if we did that. I think we might have missed a couple of them. I think we did. We skipped yeah. right along. Sorry about that. I think we did one of them um, because we had Meg had called out that there were only two indicators under it. Yeah, so we had missed the others. The first one was everything was E, so that was an easy. E <laughs> was the same. The second one we agreed on the P, even though we were split. Right. Um, the third one I think is an E. Yeah. Is that that's what I had for overall from us? I, and, I agree. The fourth one, we had, I think, do we have two P's and an E? Yeah. Oh, two, two P's and an E, so P? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So Nancy, do you have any other, anything else that you need from us in order to, you need our individual evaluations, which we'll send. Um, when do you want those by? So, you know, my thought was going into this year that we would include the all of the comments. I just want to be clear on that it, so that it, I'm making a composite using everybody's comments. Is that what the vision is? It might, get, it might get repetitive. Okay, so if there, are things, if there are things that are super repetitive, I'll try to consolidate a little bit so that we're not saying the exact same thing in very slightly different words but make sure that all points are covered. And then if you could get it to me, what, um, you know, a couple of days in advance, that would allow me to get it back out to you guys so that everyone can review it and we can have a discussion uh, at the, oh, actually we're not, we're not actually discussing this until June 4th. So we have a couple of weeks to, dis to put this together. So uh, say maybe a, a next Thursday, if people could have it back, have their individual stuff back, I can get it then out that weekend before the June 4th meeting. Great. Okay. That makes sense to people? So that's May 28th, yep. And hopefully, I mean, the goal, when Nina and I were working on the procedure for this, I mean, the goal was to have this conversation now so that when we do the evaluation um, as a composite, we can actually talk to Dr. Kavanaugh instead of each other. <laughs> so we can talk to her and, and share, again, some of these thoughts. Um, so we can direct. repeat ourselves. <laughs> Somewhat less awkward at that point. It's, it, it's less awkward to talk directly to you, Dr. Kavanaugh, than to uh, kind of talk about you as if you're not in the room. You know, it feels a, a little less awkward this year. I have to say last year, my first time doing this, I thought this is just obscene. Mm -hmm. Talk about someone who's sitting right with us. I mean, it's a but peculiar thing, this. I, I agree, Meg. I also think that this new, the piloted way of doing it made it a little bit better and it's less repetitive with some of the stuff going through every single thing multiple times. Mm -hmm. Although communication is still on there like three times, but still. <laughs> It's a, you know, it's still a good, a good, and I, I don't know that it saved, I, I don't know if they were hoping that it might streamline the process and save time. I don't know that that, that was necessarily the case for any of us, but I think it was, it's a good, either way, it's a good exercise. And, and Dr. Kavanaugh, I feel like this year in particular, you've made it very easy for us to go through this. I think that, you know, it's, it's been a good year. <laughs> I mean, maybe not in some ways, but the way you've responded has been amazing. Well, thank you. And if I could just add one thing, certainly, you know, all of these things would not have happened in the Hopkinton Public Schools if it were not for the central office administrators, all of the building level administrators, curriculum specialists, every teacher, every paraprofessional. I am so deeply indebted to all of those people. And I think, you know, our students every day benefit from the hard work. So um, I'm really not here alone. They are all here with me. So thank you. Thank you. Should I, I would say, oh, sorry, go motion? ahead. Oh, I thought you wanted me to make a motion. No, would you? I was just going to say one, one last thing back to what uh, popped into my head, which is that this year, while it's been a very difficult year in some aspects, I feel like your leadership has been kind of like grace under fire, that so much has been coming at you and at the district at once, and you sail through it. Um, from the outside, it looks like a lot more ease than I think what those of us who have seen the just tireless hours and that really 
behind your entire work ethic. So thank you for bringing us through this uh, challenging time. Thank you. And we, you know, we, we just to piggyback on both you and Jen, we, you know, we talk about how hard it is for our teachers who are teaching remotely while their kids are home and they, you know, there's a life that goes on outside of the job that happens. And I think it's so easy with Dr. Kavanaugh to forget that there's a lot of personal sacrifice throughout the entire year. And especially now there are things that happen at home. There's life for everybody. And Dr. Kavanaugh somehow has dedicated herself so much to the health and well-being of this community that she's available. She's working on Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays and early mornings and late night meetings. And I mean, she's just always there and um, always, you know, unflappable in, in, and you, you're never aware of the sacrifice, but I just, Dr. Kevin, I want, you know, we know that the sacrifice is there and we really, really appreciate it. It's not, you make it look easy and that's some part of your magic, but we know, you know, that it's not easy. So thank you. No, oh, thank you. Hmm. Okay, so. You need a motion? I was gonna seek a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. So a motion by Meg in a second? I'll second. Second by Jen. We'll do a roll call starting with you, Jen. Yes. Amanda? Yes. Meg? Hi. And I am also a yes, and we are adjourned at 8, 11 p.m. Our next regular scheduled meeting is on Thursday, June 4th at 7 p.m. Uh, we are also looking to have a special meeting next week regarding the budget with more details on that. Uh, to be coming out. So thank you all. Um, have a nice long weekend and have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kavanaugh. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, Amanda, for guiding us through this. Yes. Uh, I know a lot went into it. Yeah, that was a lot of work, Amanda. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Have a good night.